thank you for letting us share with you our work. Um, the EXCITE project is a National Science Foundation uh, funded um, attempt to introduce what used to be shop teachers to um, teaching computer science. And uh, as we looked around um, at the uh, opportunities that were out there, we realized very quickly that the AP CSP exam was probably the really big player on the block. And when we looked at uh, the curricula offerings that were available, uh, BJC very quickly became uh, the, the easiest um, uh, curriculum to work with, uh, to uh, adapt and work with. Um, we forged a relationship very quickly with Brian, and um, I've managed to meet um, uh, over the last couple of days, meet with Dan and a lot of the other people here in Berkeley. So uh, I'm really pleased we made it over. Um, BJC had already um, formed a relationship with Bird Brain Technology, and the Hummingbird uh, Library was already available. So we knew that we could start very easily with um, uh, that starting point. So let me move on to the next slide. Oh, we've already done that. Uh, the bird brain, very, very easy to use and out of the box, simple for uh, high school teachers um, to be able to work with. We very quickly realized it has some limitations. Um, the number of IOs, the fact it's all analog, uh, the fact the software, um, the firmware rather is proprietary, accented. And expensive is a very relative term because I, I know the people at Birdbrain have tried to make this low cost. But uh, we realized we needed something that went a little bit further. Um, and we also wanted it to be open source. Uh, we also wanted to make it very, very easy uh, to use. And uh, after um, running around a little, um, speaking with um, uh, uh, Bernat and uh, Jens and a few other people, we realized that the person who wrote the Hummingbird Library, Steve Holmes, was probably the best person to talk to. And so we actually forged a relationship with Steve and we were able to fund the uh, this whole work through um, our project. And so we're actually uh, at the point now where I can hand over to Steve to tell you a little bit about the architecture um, and uh, we'll come back and give you a demo in a few minutes. So Steve, um, did you want me to stop sharing and for you to be able to share? Okay, that'll work. Yeah, I, yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, I've stopped sharing. Over to you. Okay. I will share. Okay, so I have the same deck. Um, so I'll just scroll down a bit. Um, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so we're going to focus on the micro bit. Um, and what we want to do is access the IO pins on the micro bit um, directly. So Hummingbird's done a nice job of packaging the pins and making it very easy to plug in servos and LEDs in the right place. Um, but as we'll see, the micro bit actually has 20 pins um, on its edge here. And so it's, it's actually quite powerful and there's a lot of possibilities um, that can be had with, um, you know, interacting with hardware. Um, so this slide here sort of is a high level diagram of here's the PC and here's the micro bit. And the important thing is what's not here. So what's not here is a wire. Um, so I wrote code that would um, communicate with Snap running in the browser and thus Snap blocks um, wirelessly over Bluetooth. Um, the uh, code is written in C++. So there, the micro bit has a Bluetooth chip. And so I was able to um, just write the code to establish that communication. So that got rid of the wire. What it also got rid of was the need to uh, install um, software dedicated to the um, communications uh, between the two, because we're leveraging on a, um, a web, web Bluetooth, which is actually um, you know, a browser version of Bluetooth. So it's a well-known protocol. Okay, next slide. Um, so yeah, this is just continuing. 
Um, so yeah, so brow browsers, Google, Edge, and um, Opera have enabled or created a JavaScript API that allows uh, Bluetooth communication with devices. Um, so I've, we've leveraged on that um, to get the snap blocks to talk to the micro bit through this web Bluetooth. Um, so the, the, the bullet point there is that we don't need um, to install driver software because we're leveraging on the feature that's in the browser. The other thing that we ha get out of this is we can run um, one instance of Snap in the cloud and we could um, be compatible on a variety of platforms. So in other words, the um, folks who have um, created the browsers have done all the work for us. They've added this uh, Bluetooth communication layer that um, we're leveraging on. And so he just here's the browser compatibility chart. So you can see Edge, Chrome, and Opera are the big ones. So just some background on the micro bit for those that don't know it. Um, so it's got 25 LED matrix. So it's a five by five matrix. Each of these LEDs can be controlled individually. Um, it's got a light sensor. Those are through the LEDs. Um, it's got button, two buttons here, buttons A and B. And the most important thing for us is the 17 um, IO pins. Um, six of those are analog and three of them are um, pulse width um, modulation. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and we also have other communication methods, ITC, SPI, and UART. Um, I'll just keep going through this. So you can see the micro bit has an ARM processor with its own RAM and it's got, last bullet point there, it's got its own Bluetooth chip. So um, I wrote C++ code um, to just run on this mini processor and um, use that chip to uh, communicate with the outside world. The other cool thing it has is the accelerometer, three axis, so the X, Y, and Z axis. Is, um, it's a pretty accurate accelerometer and pretty responsive. The magnetometer is there as well, and that's useful for implementing um, compass. Okay. Um, so the program is written in C++. Um, so not only does it um, talk Bluetooth to the snap blocks, it manipulates um, the IO pins. Um, so the input pins, this is about setting pins, um, setting a pin to a level, a voltage level, you know. So a digital, it's either on or off or analog, it's between zero or 3.3 volts and anywhere in between. Um, output, um, you, you're, you can read the pin. You can tell whether it's high or low. Um, you can sense it. So here, so it's actually at its core, it's a very simple API. Um, we've got just read and write. So in the snap block library, write is set, right? So it makes sense, right? So when you're setting an analog pin, um, to a unit there, 155. I'll talk about the units in a minute. Um, and the same with digital. Digital is obviously it's on or off, right? So it's zero or one. Where analog, there's a range, which we'll get into when I talk about the units. And there's an is, is touched feature, which detects button clicks and other events. So it's a Boolean. And it um, when you query the pin, you're asking it, has a pulse occurred on this pin, whether a you know an inverse pulse or a high to low pulse, um, and it'll return true. So that's how button clicks are sensed. So we have a snap block for that because the micro bit supports that on those I/O pins. Oh, and and the data refresh rate is 50 hertz, so it's 20 milliseconds. Um, so the micro bit and the snap blocks are exchanging state information every 20 milliseconds. So what? So that's a pretty fast rate. Um, so it, that means that humans, it'd be hard for humans to sense, to sense any kind of lag or delay in it. So it's quite responsive. Uh, there's a close-up of the micro bit pinout. So you, this is where you really see the power of this device. It's all these pins and you can see the, um, 
The SPI connector and the I2C, you know, takes the two pins here. Um, so you can implement a lot of communication pro protocols, but we chose Bluetooth because it's wireless. So here's the entire SNAP library. Um, so a lot of the students would be working with Hummingbird and be familiar with Hummingbird. So we uh, sought to emulate that environment. So we've got servo pins here. So we have rotary and position servos. Um, we've got sensors. So we um, packaged a number of sensors and we've got LEDs, which really um, can all be done with those four blocks, those, those read and set blocks. Um, but we just package these up just so they make more intuitive sense to somebody who's used to the um, hummingbird environment. And also we have um, down the last one there, the micro bit screen up. So we have tilt left, tilt right. And so you get an orientation um, of the micro bit. It can report its orientation. And that's based on the accelerometer. Um, okay, so this isn't the slide I was expecting. Um, however, um, what I wanted to point out was the analog pins, we have our choice of units, right? So we have um, percent, so we can, so think of an LED, it's either off or on, halfway on or all the way on. Um, and since the, um, the A to D converters on the um, device are 10 bit, so that means we can have a digital range of zero to 1,023 um, for the, um, that represent the um, range of the voltage from zero to 3.3 volts. I had a nice picture that summed that up, but it's not appearing. <laughs> so anyway, um, so here's a good project that would be um, a good one to implement right out of the box, just to make sure everything is working. Um, so it tests the bi-directionality. So it tests, um, setting a pin and it tests reading a pin. Did you so want here to we have um, a potentiometer. Steve? Yes? We're sort of getting a little tight on time. Did you want to move straight to that project? Because it's actually on the desk in front of me. Okay, so, we so we're- We can show it live. Okay, yeah, so that, yeah, I'm done here then. Other than um, mentioning the breakout board and that's how we get um, access to the pins. So you right. can see the break, there's the micro bit. The breakout board is actually bigger um, and it breaks out those um, 19 pins. And there's some detail on the pins, but it's your three pins, right? Signal, voltage, and ground. So I'll hand it over to Tony and then we can do the live demo. Got it. If you can stop sharing, Steve. Yep. Okay, now I'm hoping this will work. Um, I may have to get um, some assistance. Oh, okay, it does seem to work. Um, Steve had mentioned about how the micro bit is connected via BLE, and you can see the breakout board has grown a whole series of um, different outputs. But uh, let me just get back to Snap um, so I can actually run this. Um, I've got a, a program running already. I've just got to find it. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, the, I could share my screen, but to be honest, it's probably going to be quicker just to... Okay, so what we've actually got here is a rotary sensor um, that's connected to... Uh, it's a reading an analog value. And um, Victoria, uh, who's helping me here, will, prove, will tell you that there's a value that's changing on my screen. I don't know if you can point this towards it. Um, it's... Oh, <laughs> my computer isn't the best. Uh, it's not the easiest. Um, you can actually, don't worry about that, Alan. Um, you can actually see that what we're doing is uh, the micro bit doesn't actually have um, analog out. It doesn't have a digital to analog converter on board. So what we're using is pulsed width uh, modulation to simulate um, the changing values um, uh, of uh, the uh, analog um, there. So if we can stop that one, um, please. And um, there's one there that I think, can you swivel this this way? Uh, I think, is it this one here? Is that the rotary sound? Yeah, you're gonna have to, oh yes. Yeah, if um, I've got the buzzer now connected. 
and you can actually see the button. Since they're both running at the same time, you can actually see the LED is running. But we could turn the top one, uh, the top program off if we wanted to, and uh, that would stop there. I also have a pressure sensor um, here, but I think the easiest way of um, perhaps demonstrating that uh, would be via a screen share. But I think for now, you've probably seen enough of what we're doing. The only other thing I would mention is that we're using a key studio kit, which is available from Amazon or AliExpress. And it has an absolute plethora of um, uh, uh, analog and digital uh, sensors, actuators, and uh, all sorts of interesting things um, that we'll never ever use, like an a, a alcohol sensor. But never mind. Um, okay, I think uh, that's covered everything on my side, um, Steve. Anything? anything? Oh, yeah, I just had one thing to say. Those four oh. snap blocks, the analog and digital read and write, um, are the gateway to all those sensors in that box. Um, the possibilities are huge. Absolutely, yes. So let's go back here and let's go back to share the screen and uh, come back. I'm going to share the um, our slide deck Steve, uh, once more, Steve. So, okay. Yeah, I think there, the, the only thing I would perhaps mention is that one of the teachers we were working with um, has created, a, 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 using Hummingbird, has created a railroad crossing. And I just wanted to show you, show you that as a very quick example of uh, what happens with students. But I think we're pretty much out of time, Steve. Um, I did put our slide deck in, um, in the chat. So anyone who wants to get the links to the URLs and everything else, just uh, go in the chat and click on that tiny URL and you'll have our slide deck, which has all of the information in there that uh, we presented in this talk. Any uh, any questions in the last 30 seconds? Yes, we have 30 seconds left. So if anyone has a question, please go ahead. Why six batteries? Yeah. Why six batteries? Um, it's just that's the power pack that comes with um, uh, this kit. It is switchable. Um, there are jumpers on here that you can go from five, um, or actually it's six volt, 3.3 uh, or uh, five. And it does have a regulator on the uh, breakout board. It's only a $7 breakout board and it has a power um, surge control on it, which is pretty impressive. Perfect. Thank you, Anthony and Steve for our presentation. And that brings us to the end of this session.